since we will be using the uh, using the permutation group extensively it is useful to define something from within permutation group first which is called cycle structures so we are going towards defining conjugacy classes maybe we write it down first and then uh, no but it requires the proving and so on so we can do it in either order let's do the conjugacy classes first it's a very general idea and it requires some proving if you find this discussion to abstract then we will immediately be seeing examples of this in terms of the permutation group we can also motivate it in another way so one motivation was like the <coughs> uh, which one did we say not ammonia methane ammonia has similar thing but it has a different structure okay so methane molecule there are uh, four equivalent axes uh, joining h and c the uh, other way of thinking of conjugacy classes is uh, what we call similarity transformation in linear algebra well i apologize a bit here because I am talking almost like a mathematician. For mathematicians, examples are more things from within mathematics. Ideally, we should have some, you know, uh, concrete thing to give in terms of. But let me say I am drawing on what you may be already familiar with, or what is a little uh, more familiar to us already, which is where a, a linear transformation acts on a vector. Okay, a matrix acts on a vector. Uh, so action of a matrix on a vector which is a linear transformation on so suppose we have m times x equal to y and now we if we think of this geometrically then x has the notion of a vector which we can assign a physical meaning as like a position space and m is some kind of a rearrangement of its components but if it has to have a independent meaning then we can think in terms of the bases and uh, it the action is like changing the bases okay changing the bases in terms of which we are expressing this so to cut long story short let me just tell you what i have in mind suppose we multiply it on the left by some transformation s which is also a matrix and we will say um, non degenerate uh, invertible matrix one that has an inverse now what we can do is we can rewrite this as s m s inverse on s x equal to s y okay so if the vector space is transformed using s into from v to v i mean it's an end of it's a internal transformation automorphism sometimes called then correspondingly the matrices have to be transformed like by sms inverse okay so
transforms as S M S inverse that is the statement. Then the geometric meaning is preserved, it is just that you went to some other frame which was S times the original, but physically what is happening is the same. So, this is meant by uh, a conjugacy relation. So, this is exactly what we are going to propose for group elements, because group elements although we are writing them as if they are an independent algebra, we know that secretly they are always going to be realized as operations on something. So, they are actually in the class M group elements. So, we propose for group elements conjugacy relation. We say that x and y belonging to G, I jumped to some other symbols, uh, are related, are conjugate to each other. Provided there exists a G belonging to G such that G x G inverse is equal to y. And we can check that this requirement is a equivalence relation. Okay. And uh, I am sure you have already started doing it in your head, checking why this is true. Can you write it down? What are the things to be checked? So, we can check that uh, reflexivity holds G equal to E. symmetry So, G inverse is the required element and for transitivity suppose G 1 x G 1 inverse equal to y and G 2 y G 2 inverse equal to z then we can see immediately that uh, G 2 G 1 x G 1 inverse G 2 inverse is equal to nothing but G 2 y G 2 inverse is equal to z right because I this is nothing but y, <coughs> but then I rearrange this to write it as g 2 g 1 on x and g 1 inverse g 2 inverse on x uh, g 2 inverse equal to z that is to say g 2 g 1 x g 2 g 1 inverse, because G 1 inverse G 2 G 1 inverse will be equal to G 1 inverse G 2 inverse and that is equal to z. So, that uh, verifies transitivity. The beauty of this proof is that it uses up all the properties of the group G. 
group G has to have the identity element, okay. um, it has to have inverse, so that inverse of inverse is itself and associativity is very crucially used here. If I have G 2 times this, then it becomes G 2 G 1. So, all the closure, associ uh, closure, associativity, identity and inverse are all used for proving this equivalence relation. The result therefore, is what you would have expected. This conjugacy relation is an equivalence relation and therefore, it divides the group G into conjugacy classes. Now, note that the conjugacy classes are uh, not of the same size, they are all different, but of course, you can recover the whole of group G as union of the conjugacy classes. The element uh, identity is in its own equivalence class, is its own conjugacy class, because it is it will never get related to anything else, E will always remain related to itself. If you put G E G inverse, you will get back E regardless of what G you used. So, E can never be converted into anything else by this kind of transformation and so E will always constitute its own. So, size of conjugacy classes need not be same. Size is what is, is what I mean. Sizes of the different conjugacy classes need not be the same. Uh, identity element remains in its own equivalence class, a uh, conjugacy class. More generally, if you have uh, an abelian group, then in, in an abelian group, every element remains its in, in its own conjugacy class, because in an abelian group, any operation like this, uh, everything commutes. So, x will remain x, regardless of what g you use. So, in an abelian group, every element is in, is in its own conjugacy class. But we will see that for the non abelian groups, the conjugacy class proves to be a very powerful idea because you can, in fact, think of only the members from each. So, you can think of much fewer elements instead of having to think of all the elements. All the elements belonging to the same conjugacy class you can treat as essentially one. One representative from it will be enough for thinking whatever you are trying to think. Also, we will see some uh, very useful 
technical things which have to do with uh, the representation. When they get represented, also there is a uniformity in the representation. So, now we, we will see an example, unfortunately as I say a technical example of conjugacy classes in the case of uh, permutation group. So, let us return to the symmetric groups. For this purpose, we first uh, develop the idea of cycles in a permutation group. Quite simply put, we let us start with an example. Suppose we have S8 okay. and I pick 3, 5, 7, 1, uh, 2, 8, 4, 6. So, this is some element of S8. It says the original order is permuted into this order. Now, we see what happens here is that 1 goes into 3, but 3 goes into 7. and 7 goes into 4 and 4 goes into 1. So, we have this sequence 1 goes to 3, goes to 7, goes to 4 and goes back to 1. So, this is like a sub permutation, permutation on a subset and this thing did not involve any of the other elements. What you can see is that if you square this element, take square of this element, multiply it by itself, all it will do is it had slided 1 to 3 first, now it will slide 1 to 7 and it will slide 3 to 4, okay. but it will basically slide these among themselves. If you take higher powers of this particular element of S8, all that will happen to this cycle is that the cycle will continue within itself. Okay. It did not touch any of the other elements, so let us see the fate of the others. So, 2 went to 5 and 5 went to 2, I am sorry to color it all up. Okay. So, 2 goes to 5, but 5 goes back to 2, so that is another cycle. And now we have covered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and only 6 and 8 are remaining and obligingly they are going into each other. So, 6 goes to 8 and 8 goes into 6. So, we have one more cycle which is 6 goes into 8 and 8 goes into 6. So, we write the, the cycle notation then is to identify such cycles and then only write one, three, seven, four, two, five, and six, eight. This is what we write. So, the same element if you want to call it, let us call this pi 1, we call pi 1 equal to this. So, pi 1 of course, the standard way of writing is this long way, but we can also write it out simply by, uh, by its cycle structure. It is the element that is going to send 1 into 3, 3 into 7. Okay. So, this is another way of writing it and you can see that if I square this element, what will happen? It will just slide these among themselves again. It, 2 has gone to 5, 5 will go to 2, again 2 will go to 5, 5 will go to 2. So, higher powers of this 
will maintain the cycle structure, it will not alter the cycle structure. So, in fact that is the, I mean I wrote is an example, but the more formal way of defining cycle structure is to define it like this. You say that take an element uh, pi of the permutation group and if you find that uh, pi to the power some pi and look at one of the objects, its action on one of the objects and then look at the action of higher powers of pi on that same object, because the whole set is, is exhaustible, it is finite at some point pi to the power r must return that element to itself. That is called the size of the cycle, it is called cycle of uh, the pi then has a contains one cycle of size r and then you take another element which is not in any in your first cycle, again take higher powers of pi in it, you will find a shorter or longer another cycle. So, the more formal way of defining actually relies on the fact that the same element pi raised to higher power is going to only cycle the elements of one cycle among themselves and therefore, bring them back to original order at some at some power r and that power r is actually the size of the cycle. So, if you do pi 1 squared, it is going to bring 2 5 back to 2 5 5 2 back to 2 5. So, this is cycle of size 2 because pi 1 raised to power 2 returns this pair or this list of elements to itself. This is cycle of size 2 because pi square is going to do this, this is cycle of size 4 because you will have to raise pi to power 4 to restore this set of elements to their original order. So, this is how actually the a cycle is formally defined. Okay. So, So, we already have an intuitive idea what a cycle is, but what we say is that given pi consider its effect on a specific uh, member of the Uh, what is the space? The base space, not the base space of the, what is it called? Carrier space, thank you, of the carrier space pi of let us say 1, for example, pi of 1, then if r is the smallest number such that pi to the power r of 1 is equal to 1, then uh, 1 is said to belong to a cycle of size r. So, in general pi will split up into contain several cycles. of sizes r 1, r 2, etcetera, starting with distinct members of the carrier space.
So, the important fact we are moving towards proving is that once you represent elements of the permutation group as in this cycle notation, what you will find is that under conjugate transformation the cycle structure does not change. So, let me write it at ok. So, we shall see that. conjugacy classes in S n are subsets with same cycle structure for its elements. So, to begin with and uh, just to get a little familiar with this whole thing, let us take an example, where we are not actually going to do conjugacy relation, but just multiplication. So, our example is S 8 pi 1 as before, maybe I should try to be a little compact, so that I can fit over here pi 2. So, 1 uh, 4 should be reached here. So, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 And so here, what we what I've written on the previous page, which is three, five, seven, one, two, eight, four, six, and pi two has two, five, six, eight, one, seven, four, three. So first, what are the cycle structures? So, rewrite the elements in cycle notation. sorry 8, 3, 6, 7, 4, 8. In fact, yeah, this is the long cycle and 8 goes back to 3. So, that is what. So, it this is a element with 3 cycles and this has only 2 cycles. There is one long cycle in that. Now, suppose we take pi 1 o pi 2, uh, sorry pi 2 o pi 1 first. How do we do this? We want to be able to cancel cancel this with this. So, pi 1 I write over here now pi 2 is here, what I do is I write out pi 2 in such a way that the top row is exactly in same order as this row and transposing the corresponding bottom element with it. So, I need uh, 3 first, 3 has 6 below it, then I need 2, 2 has 5 below it. 
then I have uh, sorry sorry 3 5 so 5 5 is 1 let me write it out here 1 2 8 4 6 okay so I, re I write this row exactly over here and then here I pick the corresponding columns so 3 goes to 6 uh, 5 goes to 1 7 goes to 4 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 5 8 goes to 3 4 goes to 8 and 6 goes to 7 right now we can cancel out the upper row here with the bottom row here and it produces the equivalent permutation which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 6, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 8, 7. Now, what is this in cycle notation? Well, it is 1, 6, 6 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. So, that is one cycle and now 1, 2, 3, 4 have been exhausted. So, 5, 5 remains 5, then 6 is already used up and 7 and 8 get exchanged. Sometimes in cycle notation, this 5 is not written, what is not being changed is sometimes not written. So, in fact, often not written. in cycle notation. So, they will write only the non-trivial cycles, whatever is not in the list of listed cycles is not changing, that is all it means. Okay. I also wanted to make a comment here that I introduced transpositions by just saying you exchange pairwise, I had to do lot of things like this. Now, that we have defined cycles a little more formally, I can tell you that a transposition is essentially a cycle of size 2. Okay. So, it makes it a little more rigorous what we meant by transposition and we can check that every possible cycle of any size can be written as a product of transpositions, a two products of two cycles. So, those uh, things tie up with what we have been talking about earlier. Now, uh, well, if we spend a few minutes more, then we will see something useful, which is do the multiplication in reverse order. So, next consider pi 1 o pi 2. So, I am, I hope you are enjoying this game. Uh, So, pi 2 we write out as is now pi 1 has to be written, but before writing it I put this at the top. And then from pi 1 read off the corresponding columns. So, 5, 5 goes to 2, 6 goes to 8, 8 goes to 6, 1 goes to 3, 7 goes to 4, 4 goes to 1, 3 goes to 7. Now, we cancel out the commons um, layout of the permutation and so we get the answer 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight. Actually, the eight is picked so that it doesn't. If you take smaller thing, I mean, you can work with five also. But sometimes it looks like accidental, and you begin to repeat things. So it's better to have lot of elements around. So it becomes five, two, eight, six, three, four, one, seven. And what does that become in cycle notation? 1, 5, 3, 8, 7, that is one cycle, 2 goes to 2 and 3, 4, 4 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 4. Now, what we observe is that of course, pi 2 pi 1 is not same as pi 1 pi 2, they are different elements but the cycle structures are identical. So, the order of multiplication produce the same cycle structure. So, this is going to be useful for proving that conjugacy classes all have exactly same cycle structure. Okay. So, we will continue next time.